What's up guys, Charles here with Battle Ready Arms. Um, today I want to do a quick overview and tutorial on how to do a proper undercut because I see a lot of people mess up their undercuts and do them improperly and not just do it yourself individuals but I even see people who have businesses and sell really high-end Glocks and their undercuts leave a lot to be desired. So I kind of want to go over the things that make a good undercut and things not to do when trying to make your own undercut. So the whole point of an undercut is to add, you know, some ergonomic enhancements to your gun and eliminate Glock knuckle. And the big thing I see a lot of people do wrong is they'll take a Dremel drum, like one of these half inch sanding drums and just stick it in here and cut it up as high as they can. And that creates a notch here um, that really doesn't do a whole lot. Um, it'll get your grip up maybe a little bit higher, but it creates angles and edges that your knuckles rub on and it's really not the best way to do it. It's not very comfortable. Um, this hump here, you really wanna try and get this notch here and bring it forward rather than cut it deeper. Because when you just cut it deeper, as I said before, you create a lot of um, sharp angles and stuff that's not very comfortable. So when I say bring it forward, I'm talking about something like this, like on my personal carry gun here that I did. Um, you wanna take it and bring that cut forward. Don't worry so much about bringing it up. Um, people argue that you want it cut up high so that you can get a higher grip, it controls the gun better. Um, yeah, some truth to that but Glocks already have a really low bore axis. You really don't have to worry about the gun flipping a whole lot, especially in a nine millimeter caliber or something like that. So really bring it up, but mostly focus on bringing that cut forward. Your hand will rock in there, slide in there way better, round out these edges, and it just makes the grip way more comfortable, especially when you're um, going quickly into a holster. Um, on some of these other cuts where they leave the edges sharp and stuff, and focus on bringing it up. You slam your hand in there to get it out of the holster and it really scrapes up and bothers your knuckles after a while. Some people will tell me I'm wrong and I have uh, sissy hands. I'll just tell them that they probably don't run enough rounds through their gun. Um, so anyway, that's my personal carry gun there. So I'm gonna show you kind of how to actually achieve that um, cut and I'll also go over polishing it real briefly because a lot of people seem to struggle with the polishing. So get a Dremel, preferably with flex extension. That's what I have here. Sanding drum, I like the quarter inch rather than the half inch and I start at a 240 grit. I like the 240 grit because um, it leaves more shallow grooves. When you use the, um, the lower grits like the 180s and stuff, when you go to polish um, your cut up, it's going to have much deeper gouges in it that are going to be much more difficult to get rid of and take a lot longer to polish. So start at 240, plastic soft, it cuts away easily, um, so you don't need to use those real low grits. So uh, let me grab my glasses real quick and I'll start cutting on this. I also recommend something to put over your face so you don't breathe in a bunch of dust, but uh, since I'm doing this tutorial I'm not going to worry about it too much. Alright, so you don't have to have this spinning super fast. You want it fast enough so that it doesn't bind down and bog down, but you don't want it spinning so fast you start melting things. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn this thing on and start cutting away. The biggest thing I wanna do is I'm gonna take a little material out of here, but I'm gonna pull this forward um, and also round out the sides. Normally I'd put some tape across here as kind of like where to stop um, cutting forward. But this is going to be a double undercut, so it really doesn't matter in this case. But if you're going to do it and you don't want to cut too far forward, just mark out a line. I like to put my knuckle here, and then I like to take some sort of pen or pencil and just make a little mark about where my knuckle ends, which is right there. So I want to cut it about forward to the point where my knuckle is about to stop. Um, so anyway, here we go.
Okay, so this isn't quite done yet, but you can kind of see it's starting to take shape already. Um, and as you can see, I'm not so concerned about bringing this cut up. Bringing the cut up and high isn't as important as bringing it forward because that allows your knuckle and everything to slide in more easily and fit in there more comfortably. Um, so at this point, I would kind of look at it from an angle like this and make sure both sides um, are of equal height. And I would look at it from this side here and this side here and make sure that my cut's about even on both sides which it looks like this side's cut a little bit deeper. So I would come over here and cut this side a little bit deeper and then just get it to the point where I'm happy and then I would begin polishing. Um, so that's kind of the process I go over. I, I bring it out and cut here in the center and bring it forward and then I come on the sides and round out the sides a little bit. And I just do that until I'm happy. Um, as far as depth goes, I'm pretty happy with that depth. I might bring it a little bit more forward um, and round out the sides a little bit more, but this is pretty close to done. You know, a little bit more work to bring this forward and that would be about it and round out the sides. The bulk of what takes the most time is gonna be the polishing. And I just wanna run over that really quickly because, um, well, polishing is honestly, in my opinion, pretty straightforward. It's just most people don't seem to understand it very well. So, um, really, depending on what you want to do, I don't know how polished you want to get it. If you want to polish about like that, I only went to about 800 grit. A lot of people tell you if you want like a high gloss polish, you need to go like 2000 grit. Um, that's really not honestly the case. Um, the biggest thing I see people do is rush through the different grits. Um, so people will start at like, you know, 300 something grit and then work their way up or they'll start at 200 grit. but 240 grit and rush their way through it don't do that it's a big mistake you want to focus most of your time on the lower grits to get those big deep gouges out of the polymer um, and once you get those big deep gouges out of the polymer with the lower grits you can kind of run a little bit more quickly through your higher grits so spend most of your time on the 240 grit the 320 and the 400 and then 600 and 800 should go a little bit faster. Sometimes I like to take it all the way up to 1200. Um, and in between those different grits, you can take um, a little buffing drum like this. This is a uh, 320 grit and just kind of run it through there real quick. And that'll help smooth it out and it'll kind of show if there's any large gouges left behind. If there's more large gouges that need to be worked out, spend a little bit more time with that grit until those large gouges are gone and then once you get to your final grit your 800 1000 1200 whatever you decide your final grit is you can take something like this or like this really high speed on the dremel and buff it um, if you're not careful though if you go really high speed and you leave it in one spot too long you will melt your polymer and that's probably not what you want to do so take the time to sand it properly um, a lot of people get frustrated because they get to their final grit, it looks really shiny, but they have all these like gouges left in it. Take the time to really focus on those lower grits to get those deep gouges out to get the finish that you want. So um, those are my tips. I hope it helps and hopefully it helps you guys get a gun with an undercut more like this one here as opposed to some undercut that's shaped like this, which is not very ergonomic or comfortable. So if you have questions or comments, leave them below. Um, I'll do what I can to help. Um, all right, guys, this is Charles Battery Arms. Thank you so much for your time.